In the sultry heat of a midsummer evening, the annual Lowrider Car Festival was in full swing. The air was thick with the scent of grilled meats, the sound of old school hip hop, and the vibrant colors of customized lowriders gleaming under the setting sun. It was a gathering where enthusiasts from all over came to showcase their rides, each car a masterpiece of culture and personal pride. Among the sea of chrome and candy paint stood our group of homies, bonded by their love for lowriders and the streets they grew up on. There was Jose, the quiet one with a knack for intricate designs. Marco, the jokester who could lighten any mood. Big Tony, the muscle of the group. And finally, me, Carlos, the leader and the one who brought us all together. We were family, not by blood, but by the streets. As we walked through the festival, admiring the cars and sharing laughs, something caught Tony's eye. His face turned from joy to anger in an instant. There, among the rows of polished rides, was a car that made his heart skip a beat. It was his beloved 64 Impala, the one that had been stolen months ago. Yo, Tony, is that? That's my ride, bro. No doubt about it. The Impala was unmistakable, midnight blue with custom white wall tires and Tony's signature flame decals on the hood. The rage that burned in his eyes was palpable. Without hesitation, we approached the car, our hearts pounding with a mix of excitement and fear. Tony's fists clenched as he scanned the crowd, searching for the thief who had taken a piece of his soul. It didn't take long before we spotted him. A tall, lanky guy with a smug grin, leaning against the Impala as if he owned it. Tony's temper flared, and before I could stop him, he charged forward. Hey, that's my car, you thief. The guy's grin faded as Tony's massive frame loomed over him. A crowd began to gather, sensing the tension. The guy straightened up, trying to look tough. But there was fear in his eyes. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I bought this fair and square. Bullshit. I spent years on this ride. You think you can just take it and get away with it? The crowd was growing, people murmuring and taking sides. Marco tried to calm Tony down, but it was no use. Tony was beyond reasoning. Come on, Tony. Let's call the cops. We can prove it's yours. No cops. This is between me and him. The situation was spiraling out of control. Tony lunged at the thief and a full-blown fight broke out. Fists flew and the sound of grunts and cursing filled the air. The crowd was torn, some cheering for Tony, others for the thief. I tried to pull Tony off, but he was like a man possessed. Suddenly, amidst the chaos, I saw something that made my blood run cold. There, on the ground beside the Impala, was a small silver amulet. I recognized it immediately. It was a protection charm, the same kind my grandmother used to hang in her car to ward off evil spirits. Tony, wait! Look at this! Tony paused, his fist mid-air, and looked at the amulet. The thief, seizing the moment, scrambled to his feet and bolted into the crowd. Tony didn't chase him. Instead, he picked up the amulet, his expression changing from anger to confusion. What the hell is this? As he held the charm, a strange feeling washed over us. The air grew colder, and the festival's sound seemed to fade into a distant echo. The Impala, once gleaming with pride, now seemed shrouded in an eerie darkness. That night, as we drove the Impala back to Tony's garage, the car felt different, haunted almost. The charm, now hanging from the rearview mirror, swayed gently as if moved by an unseen force. We didn't speak much, each lost in our thoughts. 
Weeks passed and strange things began to happen. Tony started having nightmares, vivid and terrifying. The Impala would sometimes start on its own, its engine roaring in the dead of night. We tried to ignore it, but the fear was always there, lurking. One evening, we decided to visit an old curandera, a healer known for her knowledge of the supernatural. She listened to our story, her weathered face serious and contemplative. She told us the amulet was a curse, placed on the car to bring misfortune to anyone who stole it. The only way to break the curse was to return the car to its rightful owner, Tony. But be warned, the curse has grown strong. It will not be easy to remove. With her guidance, we performed a ritual to cleanse the car. It was a long and arduous process, filled with chants and offerings. As the final words were spoken, a heavy silence fell over us. The air seemed to lighten, and for the first time in weeks, we felt a sense of peace. Tony kept the Impala, but it was never the same. The festival had left its mark, a reminder of the unseen forces that can bind us. We never saw the thief again, and part of me wonders if he ever existed at all. The amulet hangs in Tony's garage now, a symbol of a night when the line between the living and the supernatural blurred, reminding us that some possessions are more than just metal and paint. They carry the weight of our souls. And so the Festival of Lost Souls became a legend among the lowrider community, a chilling tale of love, loss, and the unbreakable bond between a man and his ride. If you enjoyed this story, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more chilling tales. Until next time, stay safe and stay vigilant. Midnight listeners. Are you ready for the wild world of lowrider car clubs? And I'm challenging us to uncover the craziest horror stories about gangs, ghosts, and those epic custom rides. In the vibrant world of lowrider car clubs, creativity and community come together in a beautiful blend of art, music, and of course, those sleek, hydraulic-equipped rides that'll leave you mesmerized. But beneath the surface of this lively culture, some members have faced experiences that'll send chills down your spine. Lowrider car clubs face a daunting array of challenges, and gang violence is one of the most vicious threats they encounter. It's not uncommon to hear stories of rival gangs crashing car shows, stirring up trouble, and even resorting to violence. The consequences can be devastating, leaving club members shaken and scared for their lives. These intense confrontations often lead to a sense of unease, an eerie feeling that something's lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. The tension is palpable, and it's not hard to imagine how easily these situations can spiral out of control. And yet, amidst all the chaos, there are whispers of something even more sinister, ghostly apparitions that seem to materialize during the dead of night when the only sound is the hum of hydraulic pumps and the neon glow of customized headlights. There have been reports of ghostly figures spotted during nighttime meets when club members would gather in abandoned parking lots surrounded by their beloved rides. These apparitions are said to appear out of nowhere, their eyes glowing with an otherworldly intensity, sending chills down the spines of even the toughest club members. It's hard to distinguish fact from fiction, but one thing's for sure, these stories send a shiver down your spine. In some instances, these ghostly encounters have been linked to old, abandoned buildings, where the dark history of gang rivalries and violence seems to seep into the walls, manifesting as malevolent entities that haunt the living. 
Take the case of the infamous Eastside Locos, a lowrider car club from the 1980s that was known for their radical customizations and fearless attitude. According to legend, their nighttime meets would often be disrupted by a ghostly figure in a black hoodie who'd appear out of thin air, its eyes glowing with an eerie blue light. Some say this apparition was the spirit of a former club member who'd been killed in a gang-related incident. Others claim it was a malevolent entity drawn to the negative energy of the rivalries that plagued the club. One fateful night, the East Side Locos decided to host a massive car show in an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of town. The atmosphere was electric, with hundreds of custom rides on display and the club's signature hydraulic systems pumping out a hypnotic beat. But as the night wore on, the lights began to flicker and the air grew thick with an eerie, unsettling energy. It was then that the ghostly figure made its appearance, its eyes blazing with an intense blue light. The club members were paralyzed with fear, unsure of what to do as the apparition began to move towards them. The encounter was intense, to say the least. The club members were frozen in terror, unsure of what to do as the ghostly figure drew closer. Some claimed it was trying to communicate with them, while others thought it was a harbinger of doom. Whatever the case, one thing's for sure. The encounter left a lasting impact on the East Side Locos, and would forever be etched in their collective memory as a night of unspeakable horror. In the world of low-rider car clubs, the line between reality and the supernatural is blurred, and the stories of gangs, ghosts, and custom rides become intertwined in a complex web of fear, fascination, and ultimately, a deep appreciation for the car culture that brings them together. If you're as fascinated by these stories as I am, please share your own experiences or thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And if you want to explore more of the wild world of car culture and urban legends, be sure to check out my other videos, where I dive into the strange, the bizarre, and the utterly fascinating. Thanks for joining me on this journey into the heart of lowrider horror. Until next time, stay curious and keep it weird.